Good morning, everyone. This is Scott Forsyth with the County Maui Planning Department. It is uh, November 12th, 9-10, and the uh, Maui MPO attack is now called to order. Thank you, Member uh, Forsyth. Um, Wendy, can I ask that you call the roll um, and just have members see that they're either here or if they're not, then I guess we'll have silence. Um, and members, when you uh, respond to the roll, please note that Sunshine Law requires that you acknowledge anybody else in the room with you. So state where you're calling in from and acknowledge anybody in the room with you. Minors do not need to be identified. Okay. First, we have uh, Tai Fukuroku, who is sitting in for Annette Matsuda. I don't see him on the Okay, we'll move on to Tai Takeno. Hi, to Kendall, County Maui, Department of Public Works, Engineering Division. I'm in my office in the county building, and uh, no one else is with me. Okay, thank you, Ty. Um, Nali, Yakin. Hi, morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Morning, everyone. Um, Nali again at the County of Maui, Department of Public Works, Engineering Division conference room, and I'm by myself. Thank you. Thank you, Nali. Next is Chico Rivara. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Chico Rivara in my office. Uh, there's a lot of drilling over here, so if you guys uh, don't mind the noise behind the background of my office, I'm here alone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is Wesley Bradshaw. Aloha, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hi, hi yeah, my name is Wesley Bradshaw. I'm with the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation Planning and Development Division. Uh, this is my first time attending this meeting. Um, I just transferred over here um, last month from the Planning Department. Uh, I'm currently in my office at the Trask, and at the moment I am alone, but uh, my office you know, is open. So there might be somebody, you know, um, co-worker stepping in or out. Okay, good morning, Wesley's. Uh, next, we have Camille. I'm sorry, I mispronounced your name. She's sitting in for um, Philip Anderson. Uh, hello, my name is Camille Pipus, and I'm calling in from the Department of Housing. And uh, I am also in an open office area with multiple people around. Okay, thank you, Neil. Um, next is Jackie Takakura, who is sitting in for Scott Curran. Good morning. Uh, this is Jackie Takakura, Department of Planning, Long Range Division. I'm in my office in Wailuku by myself. Thanks, Jackie. Um, I guess we should call on Scott. Scott, do you need to? I'm not sure if you said you were in your office alone or not. Good morning, Scott Forsyth, County of Maui Planning, and I'm in my office by myself. Oh, okay. Thank Tell you, Mary. That's everybody. Mahalo, Wendy. Um, and then for the record, I am Connor Batungan, the Maui MPO Executive Director, calling in from the Library of Commemorative Schools, Maui, um, where I have my next appointment, and that's why I'm um, having some technical difficulties. I'm unable to get through their firewall to access uh, our normal meeting invitation. Um, Wendy Nathan uh, is the Maui MPO Financial Analyst. She read the role. And Wendy, are you calling in from um, the MPO office, and is there anybody else with you? Yes, I am from calling in from the MPO office, and there's no one here. Thank you. Uh, also, for the record, nobody else is in the library room with me. 
Um, last staff member is Nohulu Nunokawa, Maui Corp uh, Deputy Corporation Counsel. Nohulu, are you there? Yeah, I am in my office uh, alone uh, at uh, 200 uh, South High Street. All right, thank you, uh, Nohulu. Okay, um, members, we need to start off the meeting by electing a presiding officer. Uh, mahalo to Scott for stepping up to call the meeting to order. Um, would anybody like to make a motion to elect um, somebody to serve as the uh, presiding officer for today's meeting? And uh, just one quick thing, uh, Kyle and I. Uh, if we could have the members on camera, I'm not sure if uh, it's just my computer, but I can only see uh, two, now three members. We need a quorum of members on camera uh, in order to take action on items. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, Sunshine Law does require that all members have their um, video camera on throughout the meeting. We also ask that members of the public who are not actively testifying um, need their camera and their microphones. Um, since I'm only calling in and don't have video, uh, can you let me know when it's okay to proceed? Yeah, it looks like we now have uh, more than a quorum uh, on camera. Oh, perfect. Now, uh, members, we do need to elect the presiding officer for today's meeting. Uh, I want to mahalo Scott for stepping in to be able to call us to order, but um, we should make it, uh, we should officially elect somebody to preside. Would anybody like to nominate themselves? Uh, I think Scott did such a great job, I nominate him. Yeah, we have a motion on the floor to uh, elect Scott. From, based on the voice, I think that was Jackie. Uh, do we have a second? Correct. A uh, second. Nolly. Is that from Nolly? Yeah. So we have a motion on the floor by Jackie, second by Nolly, uh, to elect Scott to serve as the presiding officer for today's meeting. Um, normally, I would turn the floor <laughs> over to the person who made the vote. In this case, I'll, um, I'll I'll turn it over to Scott since it, he is most affected by the motion. Well, yeah, I uh, um, thank Jackie for nominating me. Thanks a lot, Jackie. Nice Monday morning start off. <laughs> and thanks, Dolly, for the second. Um, so, what? To, how do you want to proceed, uh, Kaudoy? We would just call for the question, and then I can help you throughout the meeting. Um, I had kind of scripted through uh, when you need to be done with Chair Roper Noonan. But uh, since those notes haven't been passed on, I'm happy to help uh, facilitate. All we right, just so need we... to sit in the and call for the questions. So we calling to order the, uh, the meeting of, what was going on? Uh, so November twelfth at nine ten. Yeah, nine ten. So you called it to call this order at nine ten, so that's already taken care of. Before we right. move on to approval of the minutes, we just need to officially make you the presiding officer for today's meeting. There's a motion on the floor; it's been seconded. So all you need to do is kind of give the members your okay to move forward, and then we'll call for the question when they'll take the official vote to make you presiding officer. Okay, hey, members. Uh... Are you in favor of supporting Scott Forsyth as today's uh, chair of the Maui Technical Advisory Committee? All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Hearing none, the motion carries. Um, Wendy, can I just ask that you record the official vote since I can't actually see who raised their hand? Yes, I will. 
Thank you, members, and congratulations, Scott. Thank or, you. Rather, I guess they should follow Scott. I <laughs> uh, appreciate your willingness. But, okay. So, first order of business is approval of the minutes from our last meeting, which was on August 14, 2024. Um, those minutes are have been posted on the Maui MPO TAF website, or the Maui MPO's website <laughs> under the TAF um, tab. They should also have been included in the um, the packet for today's meeting. So, Scott, we just need you to open up public testimony uh, before the body can take action. Members, you can either vote to approve the minutes, and that's with or without amendments. You can disapprove the minutes or to defer. Uh, so, Scott, um, when you're ready, you're welcome to open the floor for public testimony. Did you hear or see none? Um, waiting, you can then close public testimony. Um, members of the public know that you're able to sign up to provide testimony uh, at the beginning of each agenda item, and you will have the floor for three minutes. Certainly. I like to remember. Up, uh... Go ahead, Kyle. No, I was just going to say, members, you are then free to ask clarifying questions of the testifier, uh, which should not expand upon the testimony given. Uh, but clarify what was previously stated. Okay, I'd like to open up the public testimony. Do we have any testifiers this morning? Do not see any in the chat, Wendy? There's there's none here at the office, the Maui MPO office. And I, I don't do. see anything in the chat. Given that we have uh, no testifiers, uh, we will now close public testimony. Um, and uh, are, do we have any comments on the August 14th uh, meeting notes? Seeing no comments on the meeting notes, uh, do we have a motion to approve the August 14th uh, meeting notes as is? Oh, this is Jackie. I move to approve the minutes of August 14th. Great. Do we have uh, someone who can second that, please? Um, second. This is Nolly. All right. Thank you, Nolly. We have a second on the floor. So meeting notes are approved oh sorry about that yeah so can, can we have a vote on the meeting notes please to approve the meeting notes so all in favor can you see the aye 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 Aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Hearing none, aye. Thank you, members. Thank you. Meeting notes passed. Uh, moving on the agenda, old business. There are no new items. So, number four, new business, public testimony. Um, this is one that I discussed with um, uh, Chairman Brady. Um, he had asked to move public testimony at the last nomination to other city and states. Um, just would like to cooperate in an opportunity. And the reason for moving public testimony to after the presentation would be so that members of the public would be able to pass it on a little things to the body before um, anybody can ask. Sure, okay. We'll hear presentation from the on um, major public testimony before the committee takes a vote on their state. You know, uh, also, approval, disapproval, or uh, deferring. Okay, so we will move public testimony following the presentations. Um, the next item up uh, for business is presentation on draft carbon reduction strategy. Who do we have presenting Thank this item? Um, so those are arranged through Chair Roper Um There should be representatives from HDOT or other consultants 
on in the call. I'd ask that be uh, for the presentation now. Yes, um, hi, can I start? Yeah, please, please do, yes. It, uh, good morning, everyone, Acting Chair, Foresight, and members of the TAC, uh, MPO Executive Director Batangan, and um, MPO staff and other guests. Thank you for this time to present an informational update on Hawaii DOT Highway's carbon reduction strategy. Uh, I'm Dean Matsui, I'm the state project manager for this effort from the highways planning branch. Um, joining me today is our um, consultant from ICF. Um, ICF's project manager is Jacob Zilkovich, and um, also joining us is Hannah Thompson, who will do the presentation. So I'll hand it off to Hannah now. Thank you. Thanks, Dean. Aloha all, um, and thank you, Chair and members of the Technical Advisory Committee, um, MPO Executive Director and staff and other guests for your time today. My name is Hannah Thompson, and I'm a Climate Change and Sustainability Specialist with the consulting firm ICF. Um, I'm based in Honolulu, Hawaii, and I'm here today to provide an informational update on the Hawaii Department of Transportation's Carbon Reduction Strategy. Sorry. Um, so this is work that's taking place under the Federal Highway Administration's Carbon Reduction Program, which was established as a part of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, also known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, um, to reduce transportation emissions through a development of a carbon reduction strategy um, by funding projects designed to reduce trans transportation emissions. Um, HDOT, in, uh, in consultation with um, MPOs, is required to develop a carbon, strat carbon reduction strategy that fulfills criteria such as um, supporting efforts to reduce transportation emissions, identify strategies and projects to reduce emissions, potentially quantify emissions from materials used in the construction of transportation facilities and for the CRS to be appropriate to the state's context, considering things like population density. Earlier in the year, um, HDOT presented to Maui MPO on the carbon reduction program, specifically on the identification of projects and programs to fund, including active transportation, transit, and congestion relief. During this presentation, HDOT sought and received approval from Maui MPO for project prioritization processes for CRP funds to be sub-allocated to each MPO. Since then, um, our support for HDOT's carbon reduction strategy development to date, we have done a policy review and a review of current emission reduction efforts that HDOT is undertaking. The first part of this review included um, a desk-based literature review of relevant policies applicable to transportation sector emission reduction efforts in Hawaii and at a federal, state, and local level. Um, likewise, we have done interviews with HDOT staff across the highways division to identify emission reduction efforts and challenges across planning, design and construction, maintenance and operations, and facilities and administration. Another key area of support that we are providing um, and developed our strategy level emissions reduction quantification methodologies across six key areas, including three strategies in active transportation and micromobility. This includes bike lane, um, pedestrian infrastructure, and facility additions to promote cycling, encourage walking, and reduce reliance on vehicles. Also introducing an incentive programs to promote the adoption of micromobility options like electric bikes and mopeds. We analyzed four different strategies in roadway and uh, traffic operational efficiencies, um, HOV lanes, evaluating roundabout installations as an alternative to traditional intersection controls for better traffic efficiency, signal optimization to improve vehicle flow and reduce idling times, and traffic incident management, including strategies aimed at improving traffic flow and reducing congestion. 
Um, apologies, as this one um, should actually say roadway and traffic operational efficiency, not roadway capacity and traffic operations. Um, under construction and materials, we analyzed three different strategies. This includes carbon dioxide injected concrete, the implementation of materials that reduce the need for Portland cement, um, thereby lowering emissions, and strategies to reduce materials um, usage in new road construction and also recycling materials. We're also looking at one commuter program for HDOT, which is a carpool matching program that decreases the overall number of single occupancy vehicle trips. We looked at four electrification strategies, um, which includes transitioning HDOT's public fleet of vehicles and public transit fleet to electric vehicles in order to reduce emissions, um, and also developing public charging infrastructure for light, medium, and heavy duty vehicles. Finally, we looked at um, two renewable and renewable energy and landscaping strategies. The first one is the increased use of solar photovoltaic systems. And um, the next one was tree planting to enhance urban green space and sequester carbon dioxide through increased tree cover. We're also supporting HDOT in doing a baseline assessment of GHG emissions for the on-road sector within the authority of HDOT. Um, the approach includes determining the proportion of vehicle miles traveled within HDOT's jurisdiction relative to the total on-road VMT that occurs statewide and scaling those results from um, the statewide GHG inventory accordingly. We're working on this currently um, and the results are forthcoming and will be made available uh, when the carbon reduction strategy is published. In the coming months, we will continue to make progress on the various aspects of the FHWA's carbon reduction program. Um, this includes a quantification of GHG reductions resulting from selected HDOT projects and programs, which I identified earlier in this presentation, um, which will also help HDOT to understand and prioritize potential projects with the highest emissions reduction potential. In addition, we are currently in the process of updating HDOT's carbon reduction strategy, um, and that will be finalized by the end of December. In the meantime, HDOT will continue to work with um, Oahu MPO and Maui MPO to reduce transportation emissions, um, and the project will culminate in recommendations for continuous improvement for emission reduction efforts at HDOT. Um, Thank you, everyone, for your time. I'll turn it back to you, Dean. Thanks. Thank you, Hannah. Um, that concludes our presentation. Thank you, HDOT, for the presentation. Uh, members, no action is needed. Um, HDOT just asked for the opportunity to present on the carbon reduction strategy updates. Um, the next item on the agenda is the uh, a presentation on the urban boundary and functional classification. Um, this one will require action from the committee. So I ask that you hear the presentation and then take public testimony before uh, taking action. Hi, I guess is there anybody on from Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Connelly. Me. No, I just don't have the I don't have the opportunity to see anybody, so I wasn't okay. clear on who was getting to present. Uh, but the floor is yours. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, good morning, everybody. Hi, um, I am Patrick Tom. I am the state DOT's. I'm usually no, I am the state DOT's statewide transportation improvement program manager. Today, I'm also the uh, state's functional. Uh, sorry, Federal Aid Urban Boundary and Highway Functional Classification Update Manager. Uh, first off, I want to thank everybody. Thank Maui MPO and Maui TAC for your time uh, for us to share this presentation with you. Um, as some of you may know, over the past few months, uh, state has been processing updates to both the uh, Federal Aid Urban Boundaries and the uh, Highway Functional Classifications of our, of our roadways. Um, today, 
uh, with this presentation, we are continuing our coordination with uh, the MPO, with Maui MPO, uh, with the presentation of our uh, from our consultant. Uh, and this presentation will update you on where we are in the process. And ultimately, after uh, we're here to seek uh, Maui MPO's concurrence. So this morning, we have uh, Kathleen from our consultant team, and she'll be uh, giving you a presentation on both of those updates. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Kathleen. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Uh, good morning, Director Badagan, Vice Chair Forsyth, and the Maui MPO Technical Advisory Committee, and the guests. Um, I'm Kathleen Chu with Bowers and Kubota. Um, so the state of Hawaii, as, as Pat mentioned, is updating their urban boundary and functional classification of statewide highways to reflect changes in population and employment growth and travel patterns that have occurred since the last update, which was done in 2012. So since 2012, you know, each county in Hawaii has experienced changes in population, density, their land use um, and development. And all of these aspects can affect urban boundaries and functional classification of the highway network. And so the DLT um, earlier this year started a process to reevaluate and update those designations. So this slide here just kind of shows our agenda for today. We're gonna share with you um, the FHWA urban boundary recommendations and then let you know what the next steps are. And we're gonna share with you the FHWA function functional classification recommendations and uh, present the next steps. And, and at the end, um, we are asking for a motion to approve both the urban boundary and functional classification um, policy and procedures reports. Okay, so as a quick background, um, as you are well aware, the state highway system is an integrated network of highway, highways and roadways that serve the land transportation needs in the state. And in addition, the, both the urban and rural areas have different characteristics in respect to the land use type, the density, the trip type, trip lengths, and the roadway function. So therefore, you know, we evaluate and update these defined urban boundaries so that the appropriate functional classification um, characteristics and funding categories can be applied. Now, functional classification does define how travel can be channelized within a network in both a logical and efficient manner by defining that portion of the road or that particular street that serves, um, that should play in serving the flow of trips through a highways network. So um, what we did for this update is we've been utilizing the sub the sub stack, which is the statewide transportation advisory committee. So here you can see the members who have participated in this update, as well as uh, directly coordinating with the city and the counties. So what are urban areas? The U.S. Census Bureau uses the term urban area. Um, as it was defined in the 2020 census. So urban areas are designated primarily based on housing unit density or population density, and it's measured at a census block level. So to qualify as an urban area, an area must encompass at least 2,000 housing units or at least 5,000 people. And anything that's not in the urban area is considered to be rural. So following the 2020 census, there were three key changes that occurred um, that is different from the 2010 census. And this was including, inclu sorry, increasing the minimum population threshold to qualify as urban from 2,500 to 5,000 with an alternate to qualify based on a minimum housing unit threshold of 2,000. And another change is use, being able to use a housing unit density instead of population density. And the third is no longer distinguishing between urbanized areas and urban clusters. So all areas, regardless of population size, receives the designation as an urban area. So as part of this 
2024 Hawaii Urban Boundary and Functional Classification Update, we are using the 2020 uh, census information. So what are federal aid urban boundaries? So FHWA defines an urban area as an area with a population of 5,000 or more, or an urbanized area is an area with 50,000 or more. In addition, um, federal transportation legislation allows state and local government and cooperation with each other to kind of adjust the urban area boundaries outward as long as they encompass as a minimum the entire urban area that was designated by this uh, Census Bureau. So FHWA uses the term federal aid urban area to distinguish these adjusted urban boundaries that are allowed for transportation purposes. And so the difference is, is what you can see in this table. So a census borough urban area is different from a federal aid urban area. Okay, so why does this matter? Um, so there's several reasons why a federal aid urban area matter matters. Um, one is functional classification. Um, there could be a different design criteria based on urban or rural location, although these classifications aren't strictly applied um, right at the urban versus rural boundary designation. Um, it could affect that classification. Your highway performance monitoring system reporting um, statistics are categorized according to urban and rural location. Critical freight corridors the National Highway Freight Program uses urbanized def, uh, area definition. And so they designate critical urban freight corridors and critical rural freight corridors. Surface transportation block uh, program, there's an apportionment formula. So this could affect how much area is received, how much area is obligated in an urban area um, versus other areas. And then the last, is the control of outdoor advertising, which doesn't apply um, since outdoor advertising is prohibited by our state law. So to update this urban boundary, what we did is we used urban boundary base map. So what was done in 2012, and then we took the map of the 2020 census areas and we applied it to the map. Uh, we looked at to see if there are any areas where we needed to expand the urban areas. We proposed those boundary adjustments. And we got local government coordination. Um, today we're asking for MPO concurrence, and then there'll be D DLT acceptance and submitted to FHWA for approval. So now we'll kind of go over what, um, what has been proposed for Maui. So as you can see in this map, what you see in yellow is the 2012 federal aid urban boundary. What you see in hatched is the 2020 census urban areas. And then what you see in purple in 2024 is the proposed federal aid urban boundary update. So as you can see in this area, the urban area expanded in the Pukalani, Haiku, Pauvela, uh, Makoao urban area. So here we are proposing the federal aid urban boundary update to include this expanded area. The other area is, and this might just be a little bit of the way the GIS layers work, but there's a little bit of um, 2020 census area that was included here. So we're just proposing minor edits to the Pukalani, um, to this uh, urban area of Maui as well. And then this area here is in West Maui. As you can see, the urban area has been extended. And so we're proposing minor edits to the Lahaina and the Pili on a Kauai urban area as well. Okay, so the next steps that we have is receiving concurrence letters from the partner agencies. And so we did receive a cons consensus letter from the County of Maui 
um, we're gonna hopefully get your MPO concurrence today. And then it will go, this will go to your policy board and then deal to acceptance and then submit it to FHWA. Um, we were trying to submit by November 1st, but with the MPO process, our goal is to submit before um, the end of the month. Okay, so for functional classification, um, functional classification is a process by which streets and highways are grouped into classes or systems according to the character of service they are intended to provide. So we know that individual roads and streets do not serve travel independently in any major way. Rather, most travel involves movement through a network of roadways. And so federal policy does direct state DOTs to establish a classification of roads based on their function so that roads can be approved appropriately as funding opportunities arise. Therefore, functional classification is used in determining state, federal, and regional and local priorities as roads um, come up for reconstruction or resurfacing. And this process is important because it helps us identify Hawaii's federal aid highway network, um, helps us establish design guidelines and standards and apply where access spacing should occur. And so some of the focus areas for this update is as right you see where arterials and collectors overlap and where collectors and local roads overlap. And this is the areas that we call the areas of uncertainty. Okay, so what you see here in gray in, in green is the federal aid highway system um, designation that federal feds FHWA uses as well as the state. So what you see green is the different types of classifications that we have in the state of Hawaii. And then what you see rural versus urban. So a roadway is designated, for example, a urban princess, a principal arterial or a rural principal arterial kind of based off the urban boundary, whether right where that split, it makes sense. Also, it considers um, design and continuity and geographic features, and then it's documented um, by mile posts. So for example, um, if it makes sense to make the split at a street intersection, um, between rural, urban and rural, that's where we'll make the split because it's something that, you know, um, there's a, a feature, a geographical feature. So as part of this update, what we've done is we've taken that urban boundary analysis results and then we mapped the current functional classifications over that adjusted urban boundary maps. We reviewed our matrix of different functional classification criteria, and, and then we looked at the different generators, um, such as schools, government centers, um, tourist attractions. Those are examples of different types of generators. We look at areas where land use or traffic travel patterns have changed. And then we take that criteria from step three and we look at the network as a whole. We develop our functional classification justification report. We work with the local partners um, and we obtain concurrence and acceptance and we submit to FHWA. So what you see here is a list of fun proposed functional classification updates uh, for, for the island of Maui. So the first one, Route 30, Hanoopi'i Lani Highway. Um, here, what it happened is the urban boundary just shifted a little bit. So we've adjusting the classification of the road from rural to urban to match the urban boundary. The next one is Kahua Street. This is a new street. So the ones in bold are new route numbers. And this is an upgrade from local to urban minor collector to create more redundancy and connectivity in South Maui. Um, the next one, North-South Collector, uh, Route 3115. This is an upgrade from local to urban minor collector to provide um, better North-South redundancy in South Maui. So this is just a further extension of the North-South Collector um, further south. 
Route 3180, Wiley Road. Um, this is an extension of Cur Wiley Road is currently, um, parts of it is already an urban minor collector. So we're upgrading this extension from Kuhikahi to Honopi Lani Highway from local to urban minor collector um, due to a lot of the growth and development in central Maui. East Waiko Road, uh, a portion of East Waiko Road is already classified as an urban major collector. So we're just expanding the classification from Waiali Road to Kuhilani Highway, again, due to growth in central Maui. The next one is uh, Route 3120, Kuikahi Drive from Waiali Road to Maui Lani Parkway. Um, this is an upgrade of a local road to urban minor collector, again, due to the growth that we're seeing in central Maui. Maui Lani Parkway, this is a classification upgrade from local to urban major collector due to the growth in central Maui. Imi Kala Street, so this is an uh, upgrading Imi Kala Street from Lower Main to Kahikili Highway. This is an urban, a local, so, excuse me, a local road upgraded to an urban minor collector, again, due to growth in the area. And then Route 3940 Kamehameha Avenue. Um, this is an upgrade from local to urban minor collector due to growth in central Maui. So um, we have received a consensus letter from the County of Maui. Uh, we're asking for MPO concurrence. And then the next steps is it'll go to DLT and then submit it to FHWA for approval. Any questions? Page 18. 18. This is Ty Saketo. On page 18, I think it should be um, on the table. Kahula Street is in West Maui. Oh, you're right. Okay. Noted. Yes. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Hey, members, are there any more questions for Kathleen or for Pat? Um, this is Jackie. Um, does all of this rely on federal funding? Do we know that federal funding is going to continue into the future of federal fiscal years? Pat, do you want to answer that one? I can try. Um, so federal highways funds are identified through, you know, the Every every so often, periodically, there are transportation U.S. transportation acts. The most recent one is the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law or the IIJ thing, the Jobs Act. Um, and so every time those transportation acts are updated, comes with federal highways and federal transit funds, um, and that we end up programming in our uh, statewide transportation improvement program, and it trickles down into each MPO's regional tip. Um, so, in I guess the, the, the long, it's a long answer to, it's a long explanation to the short answer, which is yes, there should be um, consistent flow of federal highways funds that comes to us. Um, and I guess just those funds get distributed throughout the state uh, through our STIP and TIPS. Uh, did that answer your question? Um, yeah, I guess it's hard to predict to uh, where where federal funding will go in future years. So, are you are you talking about funding levels for the state or for Maui in particular? Is that what you're? No, I'm just asking because with the change in the federal administration, um, oh. it's just hard to. I'm just kind of wondering, but maybe that doesn't affect. Um, so this is yeah, this is ahead. for um, federal. So not all federal dollars are the same. So this funding would be applicable to federal highway administration funds. And so what this update, what this update is, is a part of is updating the federal aid highway system. So if um, anything that is a urban 
minor collect classified as an urban minor collector or higher is eligible for uh, FHWA funds. Anything that is a rural major collector or higher, so is eligible for federal aid funds. So local roads and rural minor collectors are not eligible for federal aid dollars. So this classification, um, it kind of, th this reclassification defines a federal aid system and it does make the roads that are being upgraded into the federal aid system eligible for federal highway administration funds. And uh, to add a little bit more to that, um, the amount of funding that states receive, federal aid funding for highways um, that states receive, uh, is somewhat dependent on, is somewhat related to uh, the mileage, roadway mileage of the federal aid system. So there's a there's a there's a correlation between um, how much how much mileage is on the federal aid system versus how much federal highway funds the state will receive by formula. It's a formula. There's some there's some number crunching formula that uh, helps to helps to determine how much funds of each color of federal highway money goes to each state. So that's why that's in part why this is important too. Uh, this update of the functional classification and urban boundaries, it'll it'll determine uh, what it whatever the formula is that they use, uh, it'll determine how much of a specific fund, federal highway fund, Hawaii receives. Thank you. Welcome. Hi again, Kathleen. You answered a, you just stated something that I heard of many times. I heard of before. But I, I couldn't get it in writing. You had mentioned that uh, that uh, urban uh, rural minor collectors are not uh, uh, eligible for federal funds, and I heard of that before. But see, the thing is, um, we tried to get FEMA funds, and FEMA says, you know, in our areas behind them in Kalpo, uh, in Pilani Highway, it's 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 an urban, it's a rural minor collector, so we're not allowed to get federal funds, but we want to get FEMA funds. But they say it's on the it's on the uh, federal aid classification route, so we aren't able. So it's kind of a catch-22. Can I get that in writing? Or, or I can't find that in writing, what you just explained. And with that, I think we can um, inform FEMA, hey, you know, yes, we are on the, the federal highway classification route, but we are not eligible for federal, federal highway funds. So get the FEMA funds for these projects. Okay, I'll, I'll look for it in writing. Um, so you, you're correct. If the roadway is on is part of the federal aid system, then I believe it's not eligible for FEMA. But if it's not on the federal aid system, it should be eligible. Um, so just to clarify, right? These form this federal highway formula funds that Pat's referring to is what we're talking about. There are some discretionary grants that uh, local roads and rural minor collectors could be um could be eligible for but in in general um you know just the federal aid dollars the things that go through the maui tip are not eligible if they are not part of the federal aid system so what i guess what i what what the document i'm looking for is what you stated where uh, it has to be a, a major uh it has to be on an urban road or a uh, urban major collector urban, versus an urban minor collector is not eligible for federal highway ur, funds. Urban minor collectors are eligible. Rural minor collectors are not. That's what, that's what, the area behind Pilani Highway, I mean, yeah. Kapo, so, going to Hana, there, that's the, it's an urban, uh, yeah, I mean, so it's a rural minor collector, and we want to get FEMA funds, and we are getting. Funds. So, what part of Piilani? Um, I think it's uh, Kipahulu Visitor Center on Hale Haleakala Highway. In Hale oh, okay. Uh side of Maui. Mark. 
So, so wait, uh, Tai, are you looking for language that specifically says um, rural minor collectors and smaller are not a part of the federal aid system? Is that what you're looking for? You're looking for something that says that specifically? Says that they're not eligible for federal highway funds. Because um, there's... Uh, so I mean, not... we, we can talk about this later, uh, right. but there, there is a I'll take over this meeting. There's a, there's a yeah. There's a definition in the federal regulations. It's 23 CFR 470 or something like that. So definition of federal highways. It basically says uh, federal highways are highways on the federal aid system and all other public roads not classified as local roads or rural minor collectors. Is that something that would be helpful? Here, I'll just post it here. Oops. I wanted to post it there. So that's the definition from the CIA, um, from the Code of Federal Regulations. It's, I forgot what, so I don't know. It's 23 CFR 470. Maybe if we can, maybe if Kathleen and, and you, Pat, can stay on the line after this meeting, uh, I can explain. Sure. Uh, okay, but, sure. Thank sure. you. Thank you for the question, Ty. Members, are there any further questions for uh, either Kathleen or Pat? Seeing none, um, I like. Scott, okay. I. Thank you. Yeah. Um, at the risk of sounding like an idiot, um, a lot of these, well, the ones that are not haiku, um, the ones for Central and West, they're kind of on Himalaya. They're on, what about sea level rise? I mean, does it matter, or is this simply based on population? Like I'm looking at the harbor, and it just kind of seems weird. Like, no, do people live on the on the piers, <laughs> or and, and along um, going towards Waihei? Um, and Kapalua uh, just seems strange. Are you talking about urban yeah. boundaries? Yes. Yeah. So the urban boundaries are basically based on those thresholds that Kathleen mentioned in her presentation, okay. with the population, households, okay. and then they're identified um, based on whatever those shapes are. I don't know how they identify what those shapes are, but those shapes that the urban, that Census Bureau has is what it is. And it's based okay. basically on population and density. So it doesn't necessarily think about other things like sea level rise or, or other things that other that individual states um, will be considering. Uh, this is, you know, yeah. kind of a okay. general population threshold thing. Is there a chance that we would see um, some of these change as population decreases or say people, uh, you know, we see retreat or, you know, we do, have, we know that a lot of people are leaving. I mean, I guess that would depend on the next census. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's possible. Um, I don't, I, I think that's possible, but so far that I really we haven't seen that. Thank you. Decrease. Thank you for that question, Jackie. Are there any uh, further questions for the presenters? All right, seeing none, I believe, Cal uh, Noe, this item then needs to be up, opened up for public testimony. Yep, so you would open up public testimony for the entirety of new business, uh, which includes the carbon reduction strategy and urban boundary and functional classification uh, uh, presentation as well as the director's report. Um, but we, before we move on to the executive director's report, we just need public testimony and then to ask the body to uh, take action on uh, what was just presented. So each dot is looking for concurrence from the MPO regarding the findings and recommendations made in the report, which they just summarized. Um, so that's the action that the bod body needs to take um and then but before yeah so you just need to open up the floor for um public testimony and then that would be the next step got it okay great thank you the clarification if you would like, I'd, I'd be happy to go for the um the rules and procedures for public testimony again before you formally open it up sure go ahead yep so members of the public um, you're welcome to present or to provide public testimony on new business, which are those three items listed in the agenda and I had just described. Um, if you would like to sign up to testify, please do so via the chat function. 
um, and those who are calling in can do so um, after those who uh, who sign up via the chat. Um, you have three minutes to provide testimony. Please note that this is not a, a Q and A session. So if you ask questions, because I think I see some in the uh, chat now, uh, that they will not be responded to here in this meeting. This is just public testimony. If you have uh, if you have questions for the MPO, please email the MPO and we can get back to you separately. Um, this is for public testimony, and then members will have the opportunity to ask clarifying questions at the end of your three minutes. With that, uh, Chair, you can open up the floor, and then I'll ask Wendy to uh, facilitate the uh, upcoming testifiers. At this time, I'd like to open up the meeting to public testimony. Anybody like to testify on the uh, agenda items? Scott, no one has indicated on the chat that they want to testify at this time. Great. Thank you, Wendy. So we will now close public testimony. And to the members, uh, the committee may vote to recommend to the policy board approval of the urban boundary and functional classification with or without amendments to disapprove the foregoing or three defer any member like to make a motion on this item make a motion to approve um, the presentation of the urban boundary and functional classification as presented thank you ty we have a motion to approve this item uh is Just there a check, second a second from jackie second from jackie thank you jackie Wendy, do, Chair, you do um, the roll? Go ahead, Kyle. Kyle no. Chair, can you open up the floor for discussion prior to taking the vote? Excuse me, yeah. Uh, I'd like to open this up for discussion. Any discussion? Seeing none. Um, Seeing none, uh, you can call for the question by voice vote. Um, if you'd like, I can facilitate that. Yeah. Seeing none, would um, does the the board agree to recommend to the policy board approval of the urban boundary and functional classification? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. Nice have it, Wendy. I believe it was a, a unanimous aye. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Now moving on to Executive Director's report. Uh, Executive Director Kaunoe. I will open this up Thank to you. Thank Chair. Okay. So members, I do want to note the time. It is roughly 10.09 a.m. And when we polled for your availability today, we only asked for an hour of your time. So I want to be respectful of that. Um, what I have listed out on the agenda is the long range transportation plan, the PIP, the UPWP, the public participation plan. So the four uh, core plans that their MPO is responsible for and then under that, I have all of the active projects listed. Um, given the time and, um, you know, I, I want to propose that we focus on the first four items since that's where the bulk of our business is. Uh, anybody have any objections to me primarily focusing on those first four items? Okay. So hearing none, I'll um, get started. So the long range transportation plan or uh, Hele Mai Maui 2020, 2040. It expires at the end of the year. Um, however, the Hele Mai Maui Action Plan, which was created and finalized on March 15th earlier this year, calls for three things, um, which it, uh, the contract for this particular update actually allows our contractors until February to complete. 
so there is a little bit of a gap between when Hele Mai Maui 2040 is set to expire and when our long-range transportation plan is scheduled to be completed. Uh, the three things in the action plan are, one, a development of, the, of a timeline for reaffirming the long-range transportation plan update. Uh, two, updating Hele Mai Maui 2040 for information and data um, purposes. And then three, establishing a plan uh, to create Hele Mai Maui 2050. I spoke with um, the task chair and policy board chair about this because I didn't know how to handle the gap in when our current plan expires and when our next plan is supposed to be implemented. Um, and I have their buy-in, but I have not been able to connect with Pat um, or Tom, sorry, with HDOT regarding uh, this proposal. Uh, so, you know, feel free to ask questions and we can re review and refine the action plan as needed. Um, there are a couple of different things I want to bring up today. One is that um, I'd like to propose that instead of reaffirming Hele Mai Maui 2040, that we do a full Hele Mai Maui 2045 update. Uh, that's because there's no technical thing. Like, reaffirming is not a technical term. Um, and the reason my predecessor, Pam Eaton, didn't want to do a full Hele Mai Maui update was because when she created the action plan back in March, there had been no community engagement regarding the um, rebuilding of West Maui. Now that the long-term recovery plan um, has been published and is out for public comment, that that changes things. Um, so I guess one, I I want a doc of full Hale Mai Maui update um, and call it that rather than call it a reaffirmation because reaffirmation is not a thing and because the um, CAMS issue with doing a full update has been appeased with the launch of the long-term recovery plan. Um, the second thing I want to do is eliminate the scope for um, starting Hele Mai Maui 2050 in this project update. And that's because um, Pam had wanted to do this soft update just to do a band-aid fix um, without that model being on the table. And since, you know, my model is on the table, I think it makes sense to utilize our, our remaining budget to be able to incorporate the West Nile rebuild into Hele Maui 2045. And then the last thing I want to um, ask for is a time extension. But I, I mentioned earlier that the Hele Mai Maui action plan called for an, a long-term uh, transportation plan update by the end of February. I actually want to ask uh, to give the consultant team until the end of March. Um, and I know that this extends the period between when our current plan expires and when our new plan will be adopted. Uh, but there was a bit of a um, snag with our uh, my mom's update. I don't think there was good communication between our federal partners, I think, WA and FTA, um, MTO, and then the consulting team as to what needed to be done. Because our consulting team... Excuse me, Kaunoi, you, you're, uh, you're slightly breaking yeah. up. Um, would you mind repeating oh. about uh, the last portion of what you said? Yeah. Hello. I am proposing to extend the time of performance for our contractors to update Hele Mai Maui. Um, I mentioned earlier that they are, the contract calls for them to complete their work by the end of February. I want to give them through the end of March. And that's because there was a miscommunication between uh, the contractors, MPO, and our federal partners as to what needed to be done in the Hele Mai Maui update. Um, the contractors utilized time and materials uh, assigned to the Hele Mai Maui update to complete the TIP. 
And when they completed the tip, they thought they were done with their work. Um, so when they learned that there actually is more to updating our Helimai Maui, they needed to re, uh, restart their efforts. And because of that, we're a little off, off track. So I am asking for um, the tax blessing for me to take to the policy board three things. Uh, one is to change the reaffirm Hele Mai Maui 2040 to just a full update Hele Mai Maui 2045. I want to eliminate the planning for Hele Mai Maui 2050 as a part of this project scope and then extend the time of performance to the end of March. Did that come through? Yes, that did come through. Thank you. So, any questions? I, I recognize that that's kind of a lot and that I was breaking up, so I'm happy to answer any questions somebody may have. Yeah, no, no, this is Scott. I do have one question. So if, if the, if the long-range plan um, you know, will be extended for another like, 30 days, another month. Does that create any potential uh, issues with funding allocations or, or re reimbursements due to there not be, being a conforming plan, approved plan? I don't think so. So I reached out to FHWA and FTA, and the only response I got was that during the time we don't have a um, a valid plan, we cannot update our tip. But since the, um, we just submitted our tip for, um, you know, the Maui tip was just approved by the policy board at the end of August. Uh, as far as I know, it's still under review by FT and FHWA. And and so we won't need to update the tip uh, during that period anyway. So it won't have any tangible um, impacts to our operations. You asked specifically about um, our funding. We just received last week um, approval for our UPWP. And so Wendy and I will be working to obligate those projects and fund uh, before the current plan expires at the end of the year. But in terms of, of impact to our operation, the only one that we are aware of at this time is that we will not be able to update our tip um, while we are during that period when we don't have a valid LMI Maui. Okay, great. Thanks for the clarification. Member, members, do you have any uh, any additional questions are for the director? Okay, Cal, no, sorry, I see uh, that. So, how uh, should we go about? Oh, sorry, time. Yeah. Um, how how long did you need? Sorry, I wasn't paying that much attention. How long do you need to have that the tip? Uh, how long would it take to be updated, I guess, is the question. So the current contract calls for it to be completed by the end of February. I'm asking for a time extension to the end of March. That's fine. Yeah, so an additional 30 days. Um, it might make, I know, you, I know you probably have some questions, and so it might make sense for me to share uh, the update on the tip that's what's impacted by the um, you know, the expiring my mommy after plan. Um, as you know, the it was recently approved on the policy board, so this body took action on it uh, early August. Policy board uh, gave final approval on August 28th. Uh, it was then sent to H. Dot. Their director uh, reviewed and approved it on September 12th. And his approval allowed for it to be included in the STIP. The STIP is still under review by FT and FHWA. Um, once that happens, we will then have a uh, actionable tip list because while it is valid having been approved by our policy board, we can't you know do anything with it until the STIP is uh, finalized because that's what actually gets funded. Um, 
So we're still waiting for, for this pick to be approved. In the meantime, I did speak with planning director and um, public works director regarding any potential project that can be included onto the tip as a result of the, um, the recovery plan for West Miami. There are two that were brought to my attention. One is uh, the Dickinson Street, and then the other is a, a kind of a vague plan to re well, rebuild the Highland plan in, in the long term recovery plan. Um, I was told that the Maui MPO may be asked to help sponsor some of those, some of the plans that would go into that rebuilding Lionel plan. Uh, but since we don't have any details for, for, either of them yet meaning dickinson or so for dickinson street we don't have a financial plan and for the rebuild Lahaina plan we don't actually know what studies are going to be asked in the mpo i think it's okay for us to hold off until um until the spring to be able to update our tip so again i don't anticipate any negative impacts to the mpo operations as a result of extending the time of performance for our hele mai maui update but I want to plant the seed for what's coming down the pipeline. Um, I spoke with planning director, public works director, got those two projects. And if any of you have any projects that you're, you need uh, MPO assistance on, feel free to reach out as well. So, uh, Chair, I guess that being the case, I would just ask for, um, I guess I would ask one, does anybody have any questions? And then two, would the body feel comfortable um, with me going to the policy board to ask for those proposed scope changes uh, to our Hele Mai Maui update? So this is something that could be done without a formal action then, correct? Just it for could our, be. Our I've already yeah, so I've already discussed this with um, the tax chair and policy board chair. Uh, they would prefer that I, they asked me to bring it before both bodies. Um, and I think it was their preference that, you know, the TAC kind of give their blessing before I go to the policy board. Um, but really, the it's the policy board that's going to have to make the decision for the proposed scope changes to the long-term recovery plan or Hele Mai Maui. Uh, oh, no, it's Chimpo. Uh, I think you guys can hear me, but drilling outside my window. Um, I did send you a uh, request for an admin mod on the proposed team. I haven't got a chance to get me in. Um, not yet, but we will be working with HDOT to do admin mods in the spring, and I'm proposing to do the tip modifications around that same time. So, um, it, while I have not yet read your email, I will, I will be passing it along to Pat, uh, and then working with him to do the admin mod in the spring. And the um, extended time of performance for LA My Maui's update will not affect that either. So essentially, although the funding in the current tip will still be valid, the tip will be in a lockdown until the RTP to the long range plan is readopted. Is updated. Yeah. So when the current plan expires in December until the new plan gets adopted, um, we will not be able to modify the tip list. In my conversations with um, the tax chair and policy board chair, we don't think it'll be a big deal because the current tip is still under review or the, the proposed tip is in review as sorry but the, the tip is under review as part of the tip um and 
the only projects that would need to be added are a result of the West Maui rebuild. The and the timelines for that don't close until the end of this year when our uh, current Hele Mai Maui expires anyway. And uh, Mark Takamori, he has also been advised of this, so there are no FTA modifications that need to be made prior to this happening? Um, yes, Director Takamori is looped in. Uh, we've also spoken with FT and FHWA. We do not anticipate any uh, changes coming during that gap window. Maybe I'll open it up to the members here and see if anyone has any concerns or if you agree with the approach. Um, there's no formal action that is needed on this item. I think uh, we're just looking for a concurrence to proceed this way to inform the policy board at their next meeting. I have a question. Uh, Director, is, is 30 days enough, like end of March? Do you want to ask to end of April? So there's always unforeseen circumstances that arise. So the, I think it's enough. You know, I asked the consultants to put together a plan that would take us through end of February, which is what the contract for any of us for. It was tight. Um, the 30 days gave us what we believe is enough planning, but um, it, that is all assuming that there's no surprises that come down the pipeline um, from the long-term recovery plan in West Maui. If there is something unforeseen, then, then I would probably have to come back to this body and the policy board. Thank you. So that this item would, this FA would then go to the policy board this month. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little frustrating. Um, you know, I, I did not realize when I stepped into this role that there would be a gap in the expiration of our uh, current Helimai Maui, or when the new one was set to be proposed. Um, so that part is is a little difficult, and learning how it would impact um, the MPO's operations and how to mitigate those impacts has been a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but I do feel for um, you know my predecessor Pam, who created an action plan without knowing what was happening regarding the rebuild of West Maui. Um, and so I do have some empathy with how she put together, um, I don't know, the plans for, for the MPO to be able to move forward with its operations without being looped in with the Office of Recovery. Uh, and so when we first learned of that, um, you know, the expiration of one Hele Mai Maui and the gap between the next one being adopted, uh, Wendy and I have worked really hard and have to communicate with all of our partners, FTA, FHWA, and the, um, the policy board chair, the tax chair. The one, the one group that we have not yet um, connected with is HDOT. And so if in our conversations with them later this week or early next week, new information comes to light, it would change the recommendation we change, we take to the policy board. Um, but right now, this is the best information we have to work off of, and so we're asking for your blessing to be able to move forward with uh, these modifications to the working plan for our Hele Mai Maui. Yeah, well, it seems like this is where we're at, so that this is the path forward, um, and I don't know if there would be, well, Holding it up is not going to help at all, and there's going to be that 30-day gap, and we'll just have to plan ahead if HDOT has any projects that do need to be modified prior to then, they'll either have to delay it or, or 
get those modifications done, which I don't know if there'd be time to even pass that through the tip process if that were the case, but um, are there any strong objections to this path forward? I suppose maybe the question for the attack. Not seeing any. Uh, oh, Chico. Scott. Yeah, I know Pat is on the line from the step. Would he be able to speak or uh, provide us comment on this? Hi. So I'm going to change hats, step manager hat. Um, so from, okay, so I think in summary, if this is the path forward for Maui MPO and the TIP to, you know, if you have to update the long range plan to, to do anything with the TIP, then I guess that's how at this point there's, that's the way to go. I was looking at some of the revisions that the state has on the Maui TIP and, and the county has. Um, I think for state revisions, um, most of our revisions are deferrals. So nothing needs to necessarily happen to get money into this year. A lot of money just going out of this year. So if it doesn't move now, it's not. The only challenge would be for me to fiscally constrain the rest of the program with those changes in it. Uh, similarly, for Maui County's program, I kind of glimpsed, glanced at it, and I think the changes, the modifications that Chico had, had is proposing can still, won't really, they're kind of minor changes. That's why they're all modifications. So I think they can still go forward without exact numbers. So it might not necessarily be too impact uh, impactful on the state or county's program. I would have to confirm more with Chico on exactly what it is you're, you guys are you guys want, but from the state side, I, I don't think delaying uh, locking the tip until springtime would be a problem. If it goes beyond that, though, it might be a problem because there is one thing that the state is trying to advance, but I know that it's I know that it's the schedule is not concrete yet, so it probably could wait till spring. Um, so I mean, that's just my thoughts off the top of my head, hearing the discussion on the locking of the tip until the long range plan gets updated. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. Can I just confirm, will the, the tip be provided and that was approved and included in the tip? Um, we anticipate that being uh, approved by the Fed prior to the end of this year, correct? So it'll still fall under our current valid handling by Maui. Yeah. So yeah, I think so. So I mean, your twenty, your new twenty-five to twenty-eight Maui tip is already in place. Um, so once once Federal Highways right. and Federal Federal Transit um, approve the twenty-five to twenty-eight step statewide transportation improvement program, that Maui tip for 25 to 28 becomes actionable. So um, that's, and that's what I was kind of alluding to. So revising that doesn't seem too critical in so far as what the state yeah. and what the counties are trying, counties trying to do right now over this fall revision process. Um, but I think, I think Chico and I should maybe chat up about that uh, a little more, but it just appears, I, cause I just glanced at it, but it appears that nothing, that you're proposing to change at this time, Chico, is, is too critical and cannot and won't be able to go forward uh, without, you know, without those changes that you're proposing. So I think you're OK, but uh, I'd want to look at it some more and chat up with you a little bit more uh, to confirm that. But like I said, bottom line is. This is the path forward for uh, for Maui MPO's tip, so I don't think we have a choice, really. We just got to deal with it. Yeah. And so really it comes down to a question of whether or not we have a two month gap between the end of our current uh Hele Mai Maui and the adoption of our new one, or do we extend it for a month and include West Maui in the in the updated plan? So that that's that's the practical um implications of extending um you know the the 
contract that was issued for the update allowed the consultants to the end of end of February. Um, a lot of that time again was used to update the tip rather than the long range transportation plan, and you know things have changed so we can include West Maui. That's that's um, that's really why I'm putting forth the proposal. As the as a step manager, so talking as a step manager, I think the delay that you're talking about, February versus March, is not gonna doesn't to me it doesn't matter. What what's gonna matter is if it goes beyond March, because then if you're gonna if the update of the long range plan takes longer than that and it locks up the spring revision, then now there's no opportunity to revise the step and uh, the Maui, the Maui tip actually. Uh, this year, uh, no schedule, no, not part of the scheduled revision process anyway. So, um, you know, if it's if you can hit March, like you're saying, then I think, and everybody has those had those same questions. Are you sure March is okay? Then to me, that's okay, um, as long as it doesn't affect the spring revision schedule. Understood. Okay. All right, Chair, any other questions or concerns? Attack members, uh, are there further questions? Seeing none, um, and I have no further questions uh, as well. So I guess just moving forward, this is the path moving forward. Being in a tip lockdown is definitely something that uh, you never want to do. But, you know, this is where we're at. And it uh, sounds like it's the, the path to get out of it. Um, and uh, we trust that you'll be bringing the information to the policy board and it'll be uh, further discussed then at that time. Yeah. Okay. I think you members. see his nodding no, um, so I guess thumbs up with that path. Okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think we're, and then I'll we're, keep you we're good. How that conversation goes as well. Okay, no, thank you. Thanks for the update. Okay. All right. Um, I do want to note the time. I have 1038. Um, Chair, is it okay with you to defer the rest of the executive director report, um, given that we are already 40 minutes past when I asked for you to reserve your um, shade <laughs> Sure, we, we can defer those if that's what you'd like to do. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Yeah. So, um, then the only other thing in the is the announcements. Yeah, moving on to um, announcements. The next... Thank you, Chair. So the last thing on our agenda is the announcements, and that is that the uh, next Technical Advisory Committee meeting will be on December 10th, 2024 at 9 a.m. All right, sounds good. Chair, unless anybody has any questions, you are free to uh, close the meeting. Just note the time, and actually, uh, it, it's on you to close. And with that, it is 10.39 a.m., and that is the end of a uh, technical advisory committee meeting. Thanks, everyone, and have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Ty, you. want me to send you a Teams invite? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let's get Thank out of you. this line and I'll send you a Teams invite. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Thank you.